Welcome back. The situation at our southern border reaching far beyond North and South America. You might be surprised at how many Chinese nationals are now trying to get into the U.S. The CBP stating that the number of border encounters with Chinese illegal migrants jumped over the past fiscal year, specifically as they have come from China. Let's bring in Staff Lieutenant Texas Highway Patrol uh, in the South Texas region, Christopher Olivares. Thank you for joining us again. And also joining us, we have the founder of Texas Latino Conservatives and former Harris County Texas Treasurer, Orlando Sanchez. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here. Christopher, let's start with you. Uh, what is the border like post Title, 20, title 42? Well, good morning. Thanks for having me on. So, of course, post Title 42, we've seen the numbers, you know, slightly decrease between the ports of entry. But we have to keep in mind, too, and focus on what's taking place at the ports of entry, where many of the immigrants are being released with notice to appear. Um, of course, some of the court dates are three, four years from now, some even longer. So that's one thing, too, that has caused a decrease in the numbers as far as between the ports of entry. But we're still averaging anywhere from four to 5,000 a day. Uh, as opposed to before, you know, pre-Title title 42, we were seeing anywhere from seven to 8,000. So there's a slight decrease as far as those that are trying to seek asylum, but also we still have not seen as far as any type of uh, a slow in terms of human smuggling, drug smuggling, or those that are trying to evade capture, which would be known as the gotaways. That still continues to be a problem for us, at least within our state. So we're still, you're, we're still experiencing that. And as you mentioned, too, in the beginning, Chinese nationals, uh, we're seeing an increase in Chinese nationals. Our, one of our state troopers just last week came across 30 that were walking on a road. So, again, that's, that's also becoming a, a situation, too, that we're having to deal with as well. Uh, so just to follow up to that, is this sort of an ebbs and flows that we're seeing right now? You said that there's been a bit of a drop. Do you expect that there's going to be a surge again? Well, I mean, we, uh, typically during the, the, during the summer months, we always see the numbers increase. We always see activity increase, you know, depending on what area of the border we're seeing. And, of course, also keep in mind, too, that criminal organizations in Mexico are monitoring what the administration is doing, what policies are in place, what, what loopholes they can get around. Um, it is a very lucrative business for these criminal organizations because every person that comes across that river pays a fee to make it into the United States. So they're closely monitoring that. So I do expect to see that we are going to see more of these uh, crossings or it, criminal activity taking place throughout the summer months and into the new year. Orlando, the Biden administration has flipped the federal judge who blocked Biden's immigration plan of releasing illegal immigrants, labeling them as on parole. But the DHS recently released more than 2,500 illegal migrant anyways, migrants anyways, they, after the judge's order. So the Biden administration says that the Democrats are the party of law. What does this tell you, though, after they just violated the judge's orders? Well, they don't care. I mean, it's obvious at the border he hasn't dedicated enough resources to help our CBP Customs and Border Patrol. And, of course, they're acting as clerks, not border protectors. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, everybody knows, including our corporal that's appearing with us, that the cartels are monitoring. I am down at the border this weekend in Kinney County, Texas. Now, we do know that the transportation in the white buses where they ship them all over the country has diminished. And of course, our DPS agent is correct. Since the end of Title 42, border encounters have diminished. But I've talked to my fellow ranchers in the area and the activity across their private property has increased because, as the corporal points out, the those wanting to come into the United States are now paying criminal enterprises to transport them along their private routes. And of course, our DPS, our Border Patrol, and the compact we have with other states that are sending law enforcement into Texas cannot keep up. Mr. Sanchez, you just raised a really um, important point there, and that's about how these, these migrants are being bussed all around the country. So it's not just an issue that is affecting the bordering states here. This is affecting uh, states all over the place, including these ones that are labelled as sanctuary states. So how much of a burden is that on these places that are sanctuary states and they really have that sort of that law that's in place there or that status that's in place there to have to work around? Well, uh, I'll remind you that I served on the Houston City Council back in 1995 through 2001 when it was very vogue for liberal cities to <laughs> announce to the world that they were sanctuary cities. Of course, we're now regretting that, seeing the infiltration of not only criminal enterprises, human trafficking, sex trafficking, of course, fentanyl, uh, but now the overwhelming numbers, uh, cities like Chicago and San Francisco and Houston and New York that said they were welcoming cities for illegal aliens 
are now regretting that. So it is a disaster, and it's a quite an expense to the local taxpayers. In Texas, every social service, all of our education, all of our law enforcement, and all of our health care is provided by the local property taxpayer. The Biden administration is not sending resources to Texas to help us deal with the quarter million encounters in illegal aliens that we have on a monthly basis. Christopher, talk to me about the process of when they do bust these migrants to sanctuary cities. We see it in Denver, New York, Chicago, various <clears throat> others. What's the reaction from the migrants? I mean, are, are they happy and willing to go wherever the bus goes? Or are, do they get to pick and choose which city they'd like to be in? Well, I mean, I can't speak on what the federal government is doing as far as in terms of busing some of these immigrants. But what I can tell you, when Governor Abbott uh, implemented his busing program, a lot of these immigrants, they want to go to these much larger cities, these self-declared sanctuary cities, because the city has more opportunity. Obviously, in Texas, these smaller border communities, such as Eagle Pass and along the Rio Grande Valley, some of these communities, we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have those capabilities to facilitate thousands that are coming across. So a lot of these immigrants, they want to go to these larger cities. They even say themselves they want to go to New York. They want to go to uh, Chicago, these much larger cities. And, of course, this is all on a volunteer basis. They're free to get off the bus anytime they want. They've already been processed. They've been released from federal custody. All we're trying to do is to alleviate that flow, uh, that strain on some of these smaller border communities who cannot handle just the, the influx of people coming across that border. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, too. And you, now you're seeing these larger cities that are sanctuary cities saying we've got a breaking point here mm -hmm. unless we get some funding to, to, to help these migrants and get them set up. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate both of you joining us here. Always, always great in uh, adding your insight. Christopher Oliveras and it. Orlando Sanchez, thank you so much.